right, I want to preach um, from the 100th Psalm today. Just want to preach probably the first and second verse of that 100th division of Psalm. And Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye not that the Lord, he is God. It's he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture. I just want to stop right there. You can read the rest um, in your leisure. Uh, just from those first two verses, Come before the Lord with singing or make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I want to talk and just reason with us from this subject. What did you bring to church? What did you bring to church? So ushers, I'm preaching this for you. Amen. What did you bring to church? Father, we ask your blessings upon the word now. Help us to understand even this division of song that you wrote for the people of God. In Jesus' name, amen. How many know that people bring all kinds of things to church? Some bring snacks, candy, toys, so they can entertain their children, Cheetos, animal cookies. I'm just telling you some of the stuff we find in the pews. <laughs> some folks bring all kinds of things to church, huh? all kinds of things. It's interesting enough, as I stand behind this sacred desk, I can't tell you how many times I have seen, well, even while I'm preaching, people reading books. And it's not the Bible. While the sermon is being, what did you bring to church? Some people think this is a place to, to balance their checkbook. And didn't write a check to the church. What did you bring to the church? I've seen them. They, they've gone into their pockets and purses, taking out nail clippers to clip their fingernails. Some people bring all kinds of things to the church. What did you bring to church? Thank God. Thank God that many of you brought your Bibles. Amen, amen. And those of you that brought your Bibles, hold your Bibles up. If you brought your Bibles, hold your Bible up. And you, if the person next to you didn't have, don't have their Bibles, tap them on the shoulders and ask them, hey, man, where's your Bible? Don't be scared. I know y'all. You, it's, it's okay. Where, where is your Bible? I'm, I'm looking. Oh, okay. <laughs> praise God, praise God. How many know that the 100th Psalm, this 100th Psalm uh, of the future millennial kin kingdom, it describes what worship will be like in the day when the Lord Jesus reigns in glory and power upon the earth. We're not in that glorious day right now, but since we are still on earth and have blood running warm through our veins, and since we are the family of God, we are commanded, y'all, to gather ourselves and worship him in his church. That's what Hebrews 10.25 says, forsake not the assembling of our together. This psalm tells us exactly what everyone ought to bring when they come to church. 
The background of the psalm is unclear, but what is clear is the desire on the part of David, the writer of this psalm, to praise God for all that he has done. He speaks of God's personal blessings in verses 1 through 5. He speaks of God's national blessings in verses 6 and 7. He speaks of God's forgiving love in verses 8 through 14 and his eternal love in verses 15 through 18. And so he ends with this universal call for all to praise the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord all ye land, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with, what did you bring to church? The text suggests to us, the first thing you ought to bring to church is the right spirit. Somebody say the right spirit. Somebody would probably say that that's not an argument because people, amen, I'm sure when they come to church, they come with the right spirit. You, you have no idea how many people gather in this place and they do not gather with the right spirit. Help, help me somebody. How many know that if you gather with the right spirit, that when somebody step on your foot, it won't matter? If you're together with the right spirit, if somebody pass you by without speaking, it's not a problem. I wish I had a witness in here. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, when you gather with the right spirit, what is the right spirit? Here it is. How many of you know? How many of you know? Amen. How many of you know when you go to a restaurant, you bring your appetite? When you go to a, a, a comedy review, you bring your laughter. When you go to a sports event, you bring your, your thrill of victory and agony of defeat. When you go to work, you bring your work ethic. When you go to a party, you bring, I don't know what y'all bring to them. <laughs> Amen. I don't know what y'all bring now. Amen. Amen. But when I was going to going to parties, amen, we, we brought our BYOD, amen, bring your own dance, <laughs> I got y'all, didn't I, amen, <laughs> amen, y'all may have brought a bottle, <laughs> do I have a witness here, so what do you bring when you come to church, here it is, a spirit of praise, we are told to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Are y'all with me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Greenfield. The book of Psalms is a collection of 150 lyric poems. The lyric poem is defined as that which directly expresses the individual's emotions of the poet. Religious lyric poetry reflects the inner feelings of the person whose soul is stirred by thoughts of God. The Psalms are inspired responses of various individuals to God's revelation of him in the Old Testament era. There are a whole lot of people uh, or several people that are ascribed to writers of the Psalms. And of course we have David, we have Moses, we have the descendants of Korah, we have one of them that was written by Solomon and, and Herman and, and one by, by Ethan, and then 23 of the other Psalms, uh, there's no author ascribed to them. They are called what we call hymns of doxology, which means music that was attached to words. Are y'all with me here? And so that's why the psalmist says, David says, the first word is make. He says make. The word means to make music. It is used to refer to singing of the Psalms. He says, make, make. That means you have to push. How many of you know that sometimes you gotta make, amen, joyful music? You gotta make yourself sing. Help me, somebody. Amen. Let, let me help you. And you gotta make yourself sing the right song because life will make you sing. <laughs> I, I wish I had a witness here. I said, life will make you sing. But you got to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Are y'all with me here? That word joyful is this word that gives a public confession 
of the attributes of the work of God. It ought to be a joyful noise of his attribute. The amen. The third word said noise. Now, I need to just say to some folks who don't like noise, don't read the hundredth psalm. Do I have a witness here? Those of you said, don't take all of that. He says, make a joyful noise. Some, some, some commentator says, it's a shout. <laughs> Help me somebody. Uh, those of you that say you don't shout, something's wrong. Something's wrong somewhere. Amen. How many of you know you ought to shout about the goodness of the Lord and what the Lord has done for you? Every morning you wake up, there ought to be a shout. Amen. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. If you got a good job, there ought to be a shout somewhere. A joyful shout. A noise ought to break out. Help me somebody. Amen. Somebody y'all still ain't made no noise. You just sitting there like a bump on a log. Like he ain't never done nothing for you. Amen. If you can't shout like Reverend Cook, you at least ought to wave your hand and open your mouth and tell God, thank you. No, no. It's a, it's a, what they call a ringing cry. It's a ringing cry that, that pierces the, 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 the eardrum. This psalm, this psalm, we are called to raise what we call an anthem. It's a musical composition of praise from our heart to the Lord. Stay with me. It's a public praise of God's person and work. Hallelujah. It's got to be a public praise. Amen. Psalms 40 says, Psalms 41 says, tells us that the Lord, amen, that the Lord put a new song in my mouth. If he put a new song in your mouth, then it means that you're no longer singing that old song. Help me somebody. And maybe that's the problem with some of y'all. Y'all still singing the old song. <laughs> Amen. Old song. Woe, woe is me. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Amen. Folks are always getting in my way. Amen. I can't get ahead because of some other folks that don't look like me. How many of you know that the Bible says that when he saved you, he put a new song in your, in your mouth? I wish I had a witness here. He put a new song in my mouth. What's a new song, Pastor Jones? Weeping may endure for a night. But joy will show up in the morning. He put a new song in my mouth that, amen, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become he put a new song in my mouth. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. He put a new song in my mouth. No good thing will he withhold from them that love him and are called according to his purpose. He put a new song in my mouth. Thank you, Jeremiah. Amen. Amen. The plans I have for you. Do I have a witness? Can't nobody disrupt those plans in your life. He put a new song in my mouth. All sickness is not unto death. He put a new song in my mouth. And this too shall. I need some singers in the house. Somebody that don't mind singing his praises publicly. He's been good to me. Brought me from a mighty long way. Picked me up when folks tried to press me down. Opened doors that they tried to close in my face. What did you bring to church? What did you, what did you bring? I ought to have some praise. You ought to have the right spirit. And that right spirit should be a spirit of praise. Help me somebody. Man, I have never seen anybody praise him with a frown on their face. <laughs> God, you ought to smile all the time. So much so, much so somebody said, why are you always smiling? You ought to tell them, child, if you only knew. <laughs> Ain't got time to tell you. 
Amen. Ain't got time to tell you because you'll be late to where you're going. I'll be late to where I'm going. But I got a list of things. The reason why I smile. I smile. I smile because I got food on my table. I smile because I got clothes on my back. I, yeah, yeah. Praise God. Listen. And so the, he says we ought to have a spirit of, of, of praise. That's what that verse First verse talks about, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It says, all ye land. Listen, it says, all ye land. Not just a select group of people. Everybody in the land. Because the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. Everybody. Help me somebody. Amen. Amen. Some of those folks that believe that they should not praise him. I, I, I pray and trust that as, as the, when the millennial comes, the time, of, amen, that when he will show up on the earth and give people who have not accepted him an opportunity to accept him, that they will recognize that he's Lord. And he'll, be, he'll remind them that, that they didn't get to where they, they, they are by themselves. Are y'all with me here? And so he tells us we ought to have a spirit of praise, but also a spirit of serving. It's right here. It says, serve the Lord. How? With, with gladness. Amen. Amen means this, this whole serve word historically speaks of being in bondage, y'all. It refers to doing whatever the master tells you to do. It means to be at, at his beck and call. And when you gave your life to Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says, you became God's property. Amen. Kirk Franklin wasn't the first person that said you're God's property. Paul said it. <laughs> I said, Paul said it first. Do I have a witness? He says, you are God's property. You're, you're not your own. Therefore, amen. Uh, listen, he tells us that we are to serve him. Watch this with gladness. Let the church say gladness. This little word means mirth. It means gladness or festive activity accompanied. Watch this with laughter. <laughs> Stay with me. This verse is telling us that we are to serve the Lord with laughter. We are to be so filled with love for him that regardless of what he asked us to do, we are tickled pink. <laughs> we are tickled to death to do it. How many of you know that you ought to be tickled to death that God has called you to do some things in the kingdom of God? And if he's put his hands on you to serve in any capacity, you ought to serve him and be tickled pink. You ought to be tickled to death that God chose you to sing. I wish I had a witness here. That he chose you to be a part of the missions ministry. You ought to be tickled that he chose somebody raunchy and ugly and no good like you. Amen. Do I have a witness here to be an usher at the door? You ought to be tickled. Do I have a witness here that he called you up from among the called out to proclaim his gospel? You ought to be tickled with laughter that God chose somebody like you. Amen. Watch this. Come a little closer. How many of you know that even the jobs that you have, he chose you to have it? And you ought to be tickled pink that he chose you to be the, the supervisor on that job, to be in any capacity on that job. You ought to go to work tomorrow with laughter in your heart. I'm tickled pink that he still has me on my job. All the time that I showed up late, all the time that I talked to other folks on their time. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. If I had a dollar for every hour, every minute, some of y'all talk to family doing work time, I'd be a rich man. You ought to be tickled pink. Do amen. That God has chosen to keep you employed. Oh, some of y'all looking at me strange. Amen. I did talk about a work ethic, didn't I? You ought to have a work ethic. Help me somebody. <laughs> what? Well, listen. Amen. So, so you ought to be tickled pink. That he, 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 all of that. He said gladness. It's an interesting word. It carries with it the meaning. Watch this. It carries with it the meaning of being wide-eyed and a big grin. It, it's a picture of the joy of a child. <laughs> Praise God. That Lord is something else. I tell you. <laughs> 
it's, it's a picture. <laughs> I said, it, it's a picture of a newly married couple. My <laughs> God. I said, it's a picture. <laughs> Help me, somebody. Of somebody that says, amen. I'm married now. It's a, it's a picture. I, I'm trying to help y'all look at this. this, this. Amen. Gladness. Do, do, I, do I have a witness here? Amen. It's, it, it's the gladness. When, when, let me, maybe some of y'all can't relate to that. But some of you, that when you, when you met your wife or met your, your husband, that when you, when you saw them, your, your mouth flew open. Your eyes got wide. Your face lit up. And your heart skipped a beat. I know for some of y'all that's been a while ago. You ain't had that experience. But, but can you, amen, just kind of, just for a moment, just rekindle, just see, amen, remind yourself how it was when, you met, when they mentioned their name. All the gladness that came over you. Do I have a witness here? Amen. And when you told somebody else about them, and amen, and you'd speak in somebody else's presence they can see that something was special they say you really like her don't you you really like him don't you because there was a gladness in your heart that's the kind of way we should serve God we ought to have that kind of gladness to have a witness here amen nothing stale but we ought to have gladness and our feet ought to be light and our minds and our hearts ought to be happy that God has called us to serve him and we serve him with gladness what did you bring to church a spirit of praise a spirit of serving I'm almost finished I told you we'll get to verse one or two and then a spirit of singing the text says approach the Lord with singing this little word refers to a ringing cry a shout of joy our hearts should be so filled with who he is that we that, that he has done or what he has done for us, that we allow praises to birth forth in our inner being. The first two verses tells us that when, when, when God is in your life, you'll be able, you will not be able, watch this, to hide him. I said that you're not able to hide him. Every now and then, the, the, there are some members of, of my church were brave enough to approach me and say to me, say, Pastor, sometimes when you're sitting in the pulpit, uh, the expression of your face tells the whole story of your displeasure. I'm working on that too. I'm working on that. I'm working, I'm working on my facial expressions. <laughs> when some of y'all do something that, you know, I'm like, what in the world are they doing? Okay. And, and, and so I'm working on that. But listen, here, come a little closer. There are some things I can't keep a secret. <laughs> there are some things I can't hide. I, I, wish I, had, I wish I had a witness here. And I've come by to tell somebody, if, if Jesus is the king of kings in your life, then you won't be able to hide him. Help me, somebody. I don't care how you try. I don't care what you do. Amen. If he's the Lord of Lord in your life, you can't hide him. Do I have a witness here? Anybody ever tried to hide him? You say, I ain't going to do nothing this Sunday. They keep talking about, I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to make any noise. I'm going to keep my arms folded. But the more we talk about Jesus, one arm gets uh, loose. Do I have a witness? And when you begin to think about how he, he's blessed your life, another arm gets loose. Do I have a witness here? And you said you were going to keep your seat. You weren't going to get on your feet anymore. And when you think about how he blessed your life and saved you, you get to the point where I can't hide him any longer. He's been too good to me. He's brought me too far. Is there anybody here that will agree with me? I can't hide him any longer. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for I can't hide him. How many know that the Lord will show up? I'm finished, y'all. He'll show up in your life. The reason why you can't hide him is because he'll show up and he'll run down your eyes in tears. The reason why I can't hide him 
because every time I try to sit down on him, there's a stand-up spirit that raises up in the inside of me. The reason when I try to hide him that something gets in my throat. Do I have a witness here? And I just can't hold my peace. When I try to hide him, John, amen, dancing gets in my feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. When, when I try to hide him, a shout breaks out. Amen. Out from my lips. Is there anybody here that can say, I can't hide him. He's been too good. I can't hide him. He blessed me in the going out and the coming in. I can't hide him. Because when you walk out, he walks in. I can't hide him. Because he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I'm his very own. I can't hide him because nobody knows like I know how far he's brought me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Yes. Is he all right? Don't he make a way? Won't he bless your life? Won't he do it? Won't he hold you? Won't he do it? Won't he lift you up? Won't he do it? Won't he wipe tears from your eyes? Won't he do it? What did you bring to church? Tell him I brought my praise. You can't stop me. Hallelujah. I brought my praise because you didn't save me. Hallelujah. I'm finished, y'all. But I praise God. I've come to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He is God. In the morning, he's God. In the evening, he's God. He is God. Hallelujah. He is God. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm finished. But my soul has got happy. When I think about all he's done for me, hallelujah, Jesus, that where I live, if it had not been for him, what I drive, if it had not been for him, hallelujah, that I'm in my right mind, hallelujah, yes, I said yes, I will make a joy for God, yes, I will shout, yes, I will act ugly. Yes, I will raise my hand because my God. My God brought me from a mighty long ways. Yes, yes. I'm trying to quit here. But hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Bless his name. Bless his name. He keeps on covering me. He keeps on keeping me. He keeps on making a way for me. He keeps on handling my enemies. He keeps on blessing me. Is there anybody here? Oh God. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Did you bring to church? Listen. For a lot of us, 
if he never does another thing he's done enough he's done, he's done enough for us so shout on what he's already done <laughs> watch this and if you shout on what he's already done he'll get excited about your 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 praise your right now praise and he'll start saying well i need to give them some more <laughs> i need to bless them some more if that if, if, if they're gonna praise me on the little stuff that i've done i'm gonna get ready to stack it up real high and see what they'll praise me on Yay, God. My, 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 my. Glory. I know that's right. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen. In case, in case, in case somebody's thinking that this is just a sermon for us to express our emotions, not so. Watch this. The practical piece of the text is that he says serve the Lord with gladness that whatever piece of job that you have serve the Lord with gladness watch this wherever you live serve the Lord with gladness <laughs> whatever paycheck you're receiving <laughs> you serve the Lord with with gladness I, I'm trying to get to some millennials out there they ain't never glad about anything you serve him with gladness cause it could be the other way my, my, my. <laughs> glory to his name I'm finished. Everyone standing in the balcony. The rest of you. We extend the invitation to that man, woman, boy, or girl. Praise his name. You're here today. And I mentioned that you have to have the right spirit. How many know the right spirit makes all the difference in the world?